Hey, it's Kevin DeWitt here and welcome to another plugin knowledge session. In this session, we're going to check out a plugin called Master Q2 from PSP. So firstly, if you are new to my channel and you like what you see, please click the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell for to be notified of all my future videos as they come out. So Master Q2 from PSP, this is a extremely detailed mastering style EQ, which also includes a limiter and some saturation functionality as well. So as I said, this is a very detailed plugin, definitely based for mastering solutions that need that very critical high-end detail. So let's just get into it and I'll show you around the plugin right now. All right, so here we are in Cubase and we have the PSP Master Q2 loaded. And as you can see, it is a little bit daunting. There's a lot of stuff going on here, but hopefully, hopefully when we get through this, it'll all make perfect sense and it'll all be fairly simple uh, in a very complicated way, of course. So the manual states this, okay. The PSP Master Q2 is a high quality parametric equalizer designed to operate at sample rates ranging from 44.1 to 192 kilohertz. The plugin contains seven filters, 12, 24, and 36 dB per octave, low cut and high cut filters, low shelf and high shelf filters, which can be switched to picking filters and low mid, middle and high mid picking filters, all with adjustable frequency and Q factor over a wide range. The plugin also contains a high precision EQ graph to display an overview of the EQ curve, as well as the individual characteristics of each filter. So they also state that it's, you know, very detailed. It's using all of this complicated stuff in the background, which I'm not really going to go into. You can read the manual yourself if you so choose to. It's using the FAT algorithm, Frequency Authentication Technique, uh, which was developed by them. And it uses uh, something like its double sampling technique, which allows for proper filter operation at highest frequencies. Uh, various other things, which I think I'd read and described in one of their other plugins as well, that was also very detailed. Um, it uses Infinite Impulse Response, IIR. Uh, these filters typically used in EQs tend to focus on phase and linear digital signal errors in the higher octaves. Uh, the FAT algorithm adds an octave above the Ninquist frequency. and shifts phase and linear areas to that frequency region. This frequency region is then truncated just before the output section of the plugin, meaning the phase and linear areas are removed from the signal. In other words, FAT gives some results approaching that of a sampled analog equalizer rather than a typical digital set of filters. So they've done a lot of work to make this as clean and accurate as possible and obviously designed it for mastering in mind here, hence the name Master Q, or, you know, I guess as in EQ, Q. So they also include limiting and saturation. So a selection of limiting and soft clipping algorithms to help you shape your signal and keep it from digital peaking. Oh, there's lots of stuff this thing claims to do. So how about we get more into the controls and then we'll talk about it. So the EQ graph shows the exact EQ curve of each activated filter in the same color as the line border in that. We can adjust from here as well. So we can click on any items in there. So that's good. So we have the ability to make our changes on the graph, or we can obviously come and do it over here on the controls. We can also turn it on and off. We can change the shape. Uh, we can adjust the Q and obviously adjust the width. 
And we can also solo it so that we can just hear that one band. So if you hold the Alt key down, so like I'm just clicking here and moving it. If I hold the Alt key down, I can then adjust the Q. Very similar to what we see in some other plugins like uh, Ozone, etc. So that's nice. So if you like working actually on the graph, which I actually do, I find it a lot better than dealing with knobs. But then again, it depends what I was doing. If I'm using a hardware unit, obviously the knobs is a better control because I'm going to use hardware knobs. Or if I was using a touch screen, you know, something like a Raven or something, I might want to use the knobs because the graph might be a little bit fiddly to do with your fingers. But generally with a mouse, I'm going to jump over to the uh, graph here because I can see the frequency. And depending if we actually see the audio in the background, which we will find out when we play it, uh, you can line it up to problem areas that you can see peaks or dips on as well. So you can just do it straight on the audio source. We can expand or subtract the scale of the graph here. If we need to get in real close, we can do that, or well, at least to that level, and we can shrink down to that level. All right, so we are obviously limited to what level we can go to, but it's a big enough range. We have an input control here that determines how loud our audio is as it's coming in. So if our audio is not feeding the plugin loud enough, we can obviously push it up. Okay, the range slider here is a very interesting one and it's actually quite a good idea because what it does, it actually allows you to adjust all of the bands from one control and you're not actually changing the bands. You can see the values on the bands aren't technically changing. You're doing it across the board here. So if you find that you, you know, you've dialed in your EQ, you've got it sounding pretty good, you know, you're liking it, but then you just through the process find you've overdone it a little bit. Well, you can just pull that down. Or if you haven't done it enough, you can pull the whole thing up and not have to go and change each individual setting. So I actually like that feature, that's very good. And then we have our level here, which is just our output level. So, you know, it's a balance between the in and out. We can do that and you can see that it even pushes the graph up there. So we can also obviously reduce it as well. Okay, they also have what they call a frequency hunter mode. So. Again, this is something I've seen on other plugins, similar thing, if we hold the control key down, we can then, you know, sort of, I guess in a way, solo that frequency and just hunt around. So we can do that on any of the open bands. So, you know, you have to actually go on top of one of the bands here and it will just instantly boost and you can move around, find the frequency you want, and then you can do what you choose to do with it. So as for our controls here, very standard for pretty much any EQ out there, nothing over the top. As I said, you can uh, control it from the graph as well, but down here, but you've obviously got a, a cut filter here. So a high pass filter, low cut, we've got our frequency dial, we've got our cue so we can make it sharper. We can even give it a little bit of a resonance peak there. You can see doing that if we go really uh, a steep cue. And we've got our dB per octave so we can change how steep our curve is on top of the cue because I think the cue in this case seems to do more of the resonance but we can obviously cut that like that. And as I said, we've got a solo control, so we can just wipe out all the others and just listen to that effect there. Okay, so the other end of the scale here is exactly the same as this one, but just the upper end. So this is the low pass filter or the high cut and exactly the same controls. Okay, we don't really need to go into great detail with that one there. Our two other controls on the outside here uh, can obviously be activated and they can be a bell or peaking 
or they can be a shelf. So with this button activated, they're a shelf, obviously on the upper end of the scale. So, you know, at this end, it is a high shelf. And on this end, it is a low shelf. If we turn that one off, you can see a low shelf. But if we turn it off, we become a bell or peak type arrangement there. And same sort of controls here. So obviously we've got our frequency. We've got our Q to make it wider or narrower. And we've got our gain. And again, we can solo. And as I said, we can change it between shelf and uh, peak. But you can see here the Q also again plays in part with the add some resonance there. So we can have resonance or we can get rid of it. Same thing applies on the top end, just in the exact opposite end of the scale. And then in the middle here, we have similar, except they don't have the ability to shelf this time. So again, we've got our frequency control, we've got our Q, and we've got our gain, we've got our solo button. So what we have now is they refer to a soft peak lead button. So they're stating that uh, it softens the peak curve. A special low resonance peaking filter mode is selected. This mode eliminates harsh, harsh over processing when the sound is deeply equalized. So I guess deeply equalized means uh, very <laughs> by very big amount. So if we go a very big amount here, and then we activate that, it's sort of well. It actually looks like it reduces it, so it takes it down a notch. Just obviously takes the impact of it off a bit there. Okay, now the other thing they refer to here on this this control here, on the low shelf, low peak control, instead of, you see it's all got frequency. This doesn't have frequency. It has this little symbol here. They're calling it uh, a chain button. So if I click on the that chain button, it actually does a linked filters mode. Okay, this is a little bit of a weird control here. So if we have all of our frequencies set up here and we click this link button, if we move this frequency then of this one, it moves the entire lot so that we can sweep across the entire range or just adjust the frequencies that we have controlled. Now, what we also can do is you'll see that when I activate this link, you'll also see a plus and minus that appears next to frequency on all the other controls. That allows you to click plus or minus and move that individual control there. Uh, you can also seem to do it from the control anyway, so I'm not exactly sure why that is a big deal, but it's there. Now, there's also a plus symbol next to the Q here. And it states that this engages an alternative Q mode. The alternative Q provides a different shape and behavior of filters curves compared to a standard mode. This mode is the right choice to mimic a behavior of various analog equalizers. Okay, so if we activate it, you can see it gets a bit wider there. Now, if we put it as a shelf, just turn the rest off here. Let's have a look. So if I boost it and we have a cue like that. Oh, that's a very subtle change when you're using that. A bit different there. So anyways, an alternate cue mode there just, just adjusts the sound and the style of the cue and the EQ there. All right. So Oh, there's, there's tons of settings on this thing here. So we have polarity. We can switch the left and right channels, the polarity of each individually. We can click in the middle and switch the polarity of both channels together at the same time. We have a routing section here. So it doesn't state that the routing section in the manual is anything to do with the EQ. It's routing to the limiter saturation section so you can select you know mid left right side stereo and that's routing to the 
I guess this bottom part here, which is the, I guess the saturation style limiting section. All right, so if we look at the bottom part here, we've got the process setup area, and this is this proc thing. Uh, the proc button switches the plugin into processing mode. Without this button engaged, the plugin is bypassed. Okay, so that basically just turns the plugin on and off. The FAT button uh, activates the frequency authentication technique, a high quality double sampling technology, which results in more accurate and transparent high frequency filtrations. So it adds extra latency because of the processing power in needed. But if you're using this a mastering session, I would assume that you would just leave it on, but you have the ability to turn it off if you so wish. Uh, as I stated, there is also a reset button here. So if we wanted to reset all of our settings here, we can do that by double clicking on this reset button. Okay, so this section here, this EQ section, determines where the EQ processing is applied. So similar to all of the other PSB plugins, you can set them to stereo, which is the default. You can only apply it on the left or the right or the side or the mid. And that's the EQ. So that's different to this routing section here, which is routing to the limiter and saturation section. This is actually the EQ or probably the entire plugin, to be honest. And yeah, you can set that. But All right. Then we have this analog section here, which determines the uh, amount of saturation on all of the five filters. Okay, so I guess the section's up here. The one, two, three, four, five that I've got turned on. So obviously not the cuts there or whatever. Yeah, so it says that it doesn't occur in the low cut or high cut filters. So these two don't get applied saturation, but these five in the middle do with this analog control. So we can turn it on and we can adjust the character knob. So the character knob controls the ratio between even and odd harmonics, which are added to the signal around the filter's resonance frequency. When set counterclockwise, odd frequencies predominate. When set clockwise, even harmonics pre become apparent. And then on top of that, you have the amount control. So you can obviously dial in how much of this analog saturation is applied. All right, we've also got a little stereo section here so that we can control the balance. So if our song is a little bit balance, off balance, you know, to the left or the right, we can obviously adjust either way, or we can put it back to the center. And we also have a width control. So at 100, it just is the default stereo width of the song as it came, or we can reduce it and make it more narrow, or we can make it more wider. Then our last section here, if that all wasn't enough for you, is our uh, limiter saturation sort of control section. So we've got some output levels. Okay, they're just LEDs. So they're basically the output level LEDs provide a visual indication of the output level presence. Uh, green, proximity yellow, and exceeding zero dBFS red. Uh, numerical values below the left and right labels present digital peak held. So obviously just some, some peak meters here, giving us an indication of our audio. We then have a gain reduction meter here as well, so that we can see um, the reduction we're doing with our limiter. We then have a set of limiter saturation switches. And we can choose to disable, obviously off, or we can choose various settings here. So they don't give a clear description of either, any of these settings, but they do sort of state uh, an idea. Okay, so I guess, well, to describe it here, the first setting here is the vintage limiter, which they're stating is basically the PSP's vintage warmers li limiting algorithm. So uh, one of their other plugins that we've had a look at, Vintage Warmer, um, that is this component here. So it's inbuilt in this one. Uh, if you want a more standard brick wall limiting, then you've got uh, Limit Soft or Limit Hard. 
If the track requires a balance between saturation limiting due to its transient content, they're stating to consider the dynamic saturation uh, soft knee or dynamic saturation hard knee. And you can also use more standard saturation, so saturation soft knee or saturation hard knee. The makeup led this control sets the limiter saturation into makeup mode. When engaged, the output signal post limiter saturation will be boosted or attenuated not to exceed minus 0.1 dBFS. So I guess that's just going to make up any gain loss from what you have done in the plugin. And then we have our ceiling control so we can determine the ceiling of the output of the limiter and saturation controls. Okay, and then you've got your standard preset stuff down here, you know, just the usual stuff. So that's a hell of a lot of talking about settings here. So how about we just have a bit of a play and see what we can get out of this thing here. So you'll see instantly there is no visual indication of a waveform on the back here. I was really hoping there would be one. That's where I like to use the graph because I like to actually see the audio. So, you know, that would have been a great improvement. But other than that, you know, it's fine. play with the routing in a minute when we do something else but it's just let's do a couple of changes here we'll just do the range you can see you can even reverse So from an EQ point of view, obviously pretty simple there.
Let's just dial in a couple of obvious. Just to play with the character here, see what it sort of sounds like or adds to it. Obviously going over the top again. A subtle character effect there or what I'm hearing anyway it sounds quite subtle obviously our balance is really uncomfortable when you're wearing headphones we can make a very narrow mono sounding we'll make it really wide over the top wide. Now you could add a little bit of width. Now you can see our LEDs here. We've got no limiting because we've got it off. But we can obviously turn it on. That's our vintage limiter. Now the more we reduce our ceiling, the more we obviously crush it. I'll bring it up, we don't crush it at all. You know, and in this case here, if I was to click on makeup, right, it boosts it. Now that obviously sounds absolutely horrible with it crushed that much. Obviously at the end there, I just squashed it a fair bit, just to show an extreme, ridiculous amount there. But you know, in this case here, if you're mastering this, you might just have it, just so it's sort of, like even that might be too much. It really depends on how much limiting your song needs. And if you were using a lot of limiting, um, you, you'd want to compare whether the limiting in here is what you want to do, or if you want to pull out, uh, uh, you know, a, an independent limiter that has more features. But you might get exactly the results you want from this one. So, sorry, I turned it the wrong way. When I meant subtler, I should have pushed it the other way. But if you are using this as a mastering tool, then you wouldn't usually go higher unless you are actually pushing it into another master, another limiting plugin, because you obviously want it below zero. So like in this case here, if I actually push it up, the makeup gain theory should bring it down. And it does. So it brings it back down 
to that minus 0.1 dB. So it's obviously sort of serves no value there, but so generally you're obviously going to be pulling it down a little bit if you want to. Might go minus 0.3, do a bit of makeup gain to keep it at that level. But then again, if I'm setting this to minus 0.3, I'm not going to be applying a makeup gain to get it back up to minus 0.1. That to me sort of defeats the purpose of what I'm trying to do. I would be wanting it to stay at zero, minus 0.3. So there you go, there is a very powerful EQ for your mastering sessions. Uh, obviously, as I said, it includes the limiter and some saturation functionality as well. So definitely something you could be looking at as a uh, sort of all in one. I mean, you still may want a separate compressor or something like that. And again, depending on whether these controls are giving you exactly what you need, you may need to pull up an independent separate uh, limiter or something like that but it obviously gives you some options there to not have to need to or to even do multiple layers of limiting so you might do a, a pass on this and a pass on something else you know just to, to do some extra layering there but you've got your character saturation analog control there to impart on your eq as well or you can keep it very clean by turning everything off and just dialing in your eq settings there so there you go, there is Master Q2 from PSP. Let me know what you think of it in the comments. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. Happy to help where I can. If you are interested in trying out the plugin, definitely go and check out PSP's website, demo some of their plugins, try them out. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what you like, what you don't like about the plugins. I would love to hear your opinion on these. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, click the notification bell to be notified of all my future videos. All of your support is very much appreciated. It allows me to keep providing this, this content to you on a regular basis. And hopefully it's been helpful. I thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.